Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we are going to talk about how to complete every raid challenge in Vault of Glass. With Vault of Glass raid challenges coming out this week, I thought now would be a good time to look back at the challenges that we got to experience on day one, and talk a bit about setups and strategies that I would suggest for completing all of them. I also want to make this a short and sweet guide to give you all the information you need as concisely as possible, so let's get at it. The first Vault of Glass raid challenge is in the Confluxes encounter and is called Wait For It. You will notice a pattern of the names giving a bit of a hint on what the challenge will entail for that encounter. For this challenge, you will need to wait for the wyverns that spawn in to begin their sacrificing animation on the Confluxes before you kill them. I would recommend high damaging supers for this encounter, such as Thunder Crash, Nova Bomb, Chaos Reach, and Golden Gun as these supers will allow you to kill the wyvern immediately once they begin to sacrifice. Note that you can, and should, damage the wyverns before they get to the confluxes to get them low enough HP to kill. Xenophage can work really well here for safety, doing solid burst damage without the risk of tick damage killing them with anarchy. Although I personally still feel comfortable using anarchy here, it just adds a bit of risk. I also wouldn't really recommend swords, as the puddles that the fanatics drop can easily mark you when trying to get into melee range of enemies. And again, remember that assuming everyone is using damaging supers, you have those as a backup plan as well, if for some reason a wyvern starts to sacrifice without you getting its HP down beforehand. Everything else about this encounter can be done as normal. A final note is we did have a time or two where the wyvern ended up despawning because the round was over, and it did not count against us for completing the challenge, so this should be okay if it happens to you as well. The second challenge is for the Oracle's encounter, and is called the only Oracle for you. Once again, the name gives us a big hint. For this challenge, each Guardian can only shoot each Oracle one time throughout the entirety of the encounter. In other words, the Oracles have seven different spawn locations in this encounter, and you can only shoot each spawn position a maximum of once over all five rounds of oracles. I say maximum of once because you do not have to shoot every single spot, you just can't shoot the same spot twice, if that makes more sense. For our day one completion, we did this a bit of a different way than I think what will be considered the easier way once this challenge comes back, but I will briefly explain both strategies and allow you to decide what works better for you. Our original strategy was to split into left and right teams and assign someone on each side to rounds 1, 2, and 3. Whoever is on the round 1 team is responsible for all of the oracles on their side in round 1, with the right side team also being responsible for the middle oracle. We would then repeat that process with someone new on each side for rounds 2 and 3. After round 3 was over, everyone would switch sides between left and right as no one from Team Left would have shot an Oracle on right yet, and no one on Team Right has shot a left Oracle yet. We would then do the same thing at this point, with one person on each side being responsible for all of the Oracles on their side for Round 4. For Round 5, since it is the final round and the longest, either of the remaining two people on each side that didn't shoot in Round 4 can help keep track of their side to finish off the challenge. This strategy is nice because it requires limited rotations and can keep you and your teammates together. Basically, you can help your teammates more, but it does require people to have strong multitasking skills to be able to keep track of the order of three or maybe even four oracles. The alternate strategy is to assign everyone a starting oracle and pair off a group of two oracles for one person, as there are seven oracles for only six guardians. There is really no shortage of which oracles you could pair off as the double set, but for one example, you could pair off the close right oracle and the middle oracle. At this point, you would assign each of the other five oracles to one person each, and then these two paired off oracles to the sixth guardian. For round one, each person is responsible for shooting their oracle in the correct order if it spawns. After the round, everyone will rotate to the next oracle in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. It doesn't matter which way, just make sure everyone is on the same page. You will then repeat this process for all five rounds, with each person being responsible for their oracle or oracles, and rotating to the next spawn after the round, so that no one ever has the opportunity to shoot the same oracle twice. No matter your preferred strategy, I would highly recommend Xenophage here, as it one-shots oracles 
and is also great for killing hobgoblins and even just sporadic adds that will be rushing at you. The third challenge is the Templar challenge called Out of Its Way and should be very familiar to anyone who did this challenge in Destiny 1. You cannot let the Templar successfully complete a teleport. The way we did this is by having the Relic Holder block all teleports. Unlike D1, the Templar can actually attempt to teleport to any of its four potential teleport locations right away, which are shown on screen so you can have an idea of where you may need to block. An important note is that each time the Templar starts attempting to teleport, it will detain someone, which can be your Relic Holder, so I personally prefer to start off by breaking the Templar shield from right behind my DPS team until I am sure I will not get detained, so that they can easily break me out immediately if I do happen to be detained. For this encounter specifically, a lot of teams are running double slugs in Anarchy to kill Templar fast, which is great if you have it. However, for this challenge specifically, it may not be a bad idea to have one person on detain break duty and running something like Xenophage or a Sniper in case your Relic Holder gets detained at some point during the encounter that is far away from the rest of the rest of the team. Also note that if for whatever reason your Relic Holder can't make it to a teleport block, anyone is allowed to block the teleport, so keep that in mind in case you do need to get a clutch teleport block. Next we have the Gatekeeper Challenge, Strangers in Time. This challenge is pretty unique and about strong communication. The goal here is to kill both the Wyvern that spawns in one portal and the Shielded Minotaur that spawns in the other within 5 seconds of each other every time they spawn. For this challenge, you can do things normal for the most part, other than immediately burning down the Wyvern as you will need to wait for the Relic Holder to be in position to kill the Minotaur in the opposite portal. I find stasis and blinding grenades to be invaluable tools in this encounter normally, but even more so for this challenge. And for Warlocks specifically, the stasis turret is an incredibly strong tool and option. Other great options I've made use of personally are Thundercrash for Titans and Tether for Hunters, as invisibility is always a strong tool. My recommendation is to get the Wyvern to low HP, maybe about a fourth health or so as soon as you are able to. Have the Relic Holder call out once they are into the correct portal, and do a 3-2-1 countdown as they are closing in on the Minotaur. The person on the Wyvern portal side can then kill it, with the Relic Holder killing the Minotaur right afterwards. I would suggest doing the 3-2-1 countdown as you are moving towards the Minotaur, rather than once you are already there, because that will give the person killing the Wyvern more of a window to kill it, as much more can potentially go wrong on that side than for the person killing the Minotaur. For the most part, this encounter's challenge is just a check on doing the encounter with limited mistakes and solid communication, as not too much else is needed to complete it. However, if people are unable to hold their own solo in portals, or with covering the plates from the Overload Minotaurs and Gatekeepers on the outside, it will amplify the difficulty of this encounter tremendously. As usual, Anarchy and Xenophage are great weapon options with Anarchy once again being a slight risk just due to potentially accidentally killing the Wyvern. I also love running my Ikelos SMG as my overload option of choice, as it can create Warmind cells with global reach, which makes clearing out the waves of adds in the portals super smooth. Finally, we have Atheon Challenge, Ensembles Refrain. This challenge requires that each person teleported shoots only one oracle per round of three oracles, or in other words, all three people teleported need to shoot one oracle per round. The way we went about this was that the Relic Holder was always responsible for the third oracle in each round, while the other two people called whether they would shoot the first oracle or the second oracle for each of the three rounds of oracles. From there, the encounter is run exactly as normal, just with each person only shooting the oracle they are responsible for. A high impact sniper like Succession is recommended as it can two-shot the oracles or even one-shot them with multiple precise oracle disruptors. One quick tip that you can use if you are struggling to kill the oracles fast enough as a team is to actually pre-damage your oracle by shooting it once right away and then waiting for your turn to take the second shot or third if you're using a lower impact sniper to actually break it. Xenophage is also solid as it one-shots oracles but isn't necessary as each person can only kill one oracle per phase, so Anarchy is much preferred for its damage phase potential while using snipers and grenades if you do have it. But as mentioned, everything else is the same. Callouts are the same, DPS is the same, everything else is the same. 
Once you defeat Atheon, it is GG for this final challenge. Thank you so much for watching my guide to every raid challenge in Destiny 2's version of Vault of Glass. I hope this video provided you the tools you need to take on these challenges in the coming weeks. Any feedback below is always appreciated, and a like of this video helped you truly helps support the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.